to welcome back to the Balance Direct of Teletainment. We get some two gadget guests in the building. We'll be talking, so we're going to talk about how you fit turn that skills into monetary value because a lot of people right now, when they finish from school, they're going to tell you, say, work no day. Mm -hmm. Say, there is no job at all. Say, I don't apply, 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 tie, mm -hmm. so they all the ink for my beak. Don't come more to finish. Mm -hmm. But right now, we get some uh, very two handsome young men. One of them, Nafemi Obidari, where they hold degree in sociology and anthropology from OAU, but not be that one day they to put food on top table. Oh. He don't want an entrepreneur. He don't harness the potentials we get from inside. They bring her out mm -hmm. and are waiting to make a day on top of our couch this morning. Also, we get um, Asha Adeni, you will be man managing director of Poise Graduate Finishing Academy. So two of them together, they don't gallant uh, Pause, relax, confidently sit down for inside our studio to give us more gist on top of these um, skills and this quality where we need to harness to make sure say we ourselves get a monetary value for our skills. Well, now, good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. to have you. you. And what you're so very good about, and I'll be say, um, both of you now actually managing director, co-founders of Giddy Jobs. Very, very nice one. So we will talk mm. more concerning that. <laughs> but the reason why we get you inside the studio, because yeah. yesterday, um, July 15th, was World Youth Skills Day. Yes. Now, yes. you got the one that within that day, actually, they're about. Now, a day where they encourage youth to appreciate and consider skill acquisitions, such as fashion designing, um, barbing, plumbing, um, bricklaying, and plenty others, as a way of achieving personal success and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. fast skill acquisition fit go in eliminating unemployment? Let me speak with Asha first. Ah, well, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, you know, it's only in Nigeria that we don't regard these skills like plumbing, like mm -hmm. welding, mm -hmm. like fashion designing. Mm -hmm. It's only in Nigeria because um, overseas, these are skills that put food on the table. These are skills that uh, make the middle class, mm -hmm. you know. So, but we're beginning to adopt it, especially in some states. Um, so, these kind of skills are really good for young people to have, especially in Nigeria where, you know, the white collar jobs are fading, you know, in quotes. So, um, skills acquisitions are very, skills are very essential um, for youth. Um, in Nigeria. Well, if you look now, those the, the skills where they talk about, you give examples of welding, plumbing, yeah. those are not jobs where a lot of youth, where don't go school, where strike, don't meme them for their body, no one mm. associate themselves with. Mm, yes. Because you can't be like, say, those skills they're are not, not, uh, yeah. they're not they're professional, not well, they're not, uh, they don't put in a certain class and caliber yes, of people. Yes. Mm. Why we get that perception Okay, precisely? so I think that's the work of the World Youth Skills Day for this year, yeah. mm. trying to revamp the image of um, this profession in Nigeria and Africa yeah. is because of the way we people uh, that are not even plumbers see it. You know, um, how do we pay them? You know, how do we regard them in the society? Do we give them, um, do we treat them like the white collar jobs? You know, we just treat them like, oh, these people are doing the manual task, you know, the small, the small task. So it's important that we improve our own perception mm. of the work because you know uh, when we're growing up we're taught um, you know you just have to be diligent at what you do mm -hmm. so we must ensure that we ourselves that are not into this profession treat people that are in this profession the way they should be treated as mm -hmm. diligent workers. Let me and speak with Femi. Say, yeah. Let me just sorry. Let me just speak with Femi because yeah, I know say you and a person where you savvy work on top communication and um, leadership. Mm. Um, you even do training concerning this particular field. Yeah, now, yeah. if everybody mm. beginning, to, if everybody can start, they come. Let me start having skills mm -hmm. like the plumbing and other every other way we don't talk about. Yeah. Who would then be an employee? Who will be an employee, right? Yes. Well, the thing is this. Life is in stages, all right? Um, let me say, now from the top, everybody was the start. Even people who they call entrepreneur and people who say they get skills and all that, at one time or the other, they learn some of these things for some people. Mm -hmm. Now, so the whole idea is that at a phase in your life, no doubt, you would start out working for somebody, learning something somewhere. Then after some time, of course, if you can develop yourself, can they use the thing you don't learn? You understand? Can they employ others? Stand on your own. Can they employ other people? You understand? So it's not every time that you have to start from the top. For most of the time, you can't even start on the top in that sense. Yeah. Every entrepreneur we celebrate today, at one time or the other, they work some. Even Steve Jobs, we don't pass. We do Apple. At one time, he was, he was working with some organizations. You understand? No, so, is, it, like, is, it, is it okay to 
um, possess these skills and mm -hmm. start using it to make money and still be an employee? Oh, of course. You know, the thing is this. For instance, now, if you look at... Well, I know when we talk about what you skills did, there's a lot of emphasis on skills like yes. technical skills, like mm -hmm. welding and plumbing and all those things. But again, generally, the truth is that, yeah, you can... A lot of times, the way things work in those systems is that people serve as apprentices for a while. So even as an apprentice, while you're still working with your boss, nothing stops you from you know, getting some customers at one time or the other, making money for yourself for a while. Get a lot of times, the reason why, of course, people go through apprenticeship is so that, number one, they can learn a technical trade, but to also learn the business of the trade. Of it. You get. So as you're learning the business of the trade, how do you know you've learned the business of the trade if by yourself you cannot begin to get customers that you work for, you work and apply in your own free time, and then from there you begin to grow and all. And you see the, the structure, in fact, a lot of times we look at it very closely, the structure within those um, informal sectors where you have world employment, it's so good that you are not supposed to serve with a boss for life. You are there as an for apprentice a for a particular time. After some yeah. years, you are expected to, to go and own. start up on your own, which is not what obtains in the formal sector. A lot of the informal sector, you expect that, okay, once you start working there, you remain there. If you want to go, is a problem. Mm -hmm. But for those people, their mindset is that they are building you to be able to stand on your own from day one. Now, if we even look at, because um, I know, say, um, once upon a time, this, yes. these um, professions, where they call now, they were once called blue-collar jobs or unskilled labor. Unskilled labor. Now, is it that there's, there's beginning to have a crossover, a shift in terms of skilled and unskilled labor? Do we even have unskilled labor nowadays? Because it'd be like, say, anything where you fit to do, all you have to do is keep developing yourself. And once you develop yourself, mm -hmm. you're becoming skilled in that field. Yes, so is there anything yes, like unskilled yes, yes. labor mm -hmm. and skilled labor? Well, the truth again is that, you see, a lot of things are changing with time, uh -huh. particularly in this time and age of the internet, digital age and all. Plumbers, particularly in developed environments. I remember earlier this year, I was part of a training where we went to different states in the country and we're addressing people who are into these technical skills. We're teaching them life skills. And at the same time, also teaching them how to use technology for their trades. So you're a plumber, for instance. Advancement, right? You're, you're a plumber. You're a plumber somewhere in, in Nguru, in Yobe State. The point is, how can you use the internet, for instance, to, to sell your market? Which is, is it, the world is coming closer and closer. It's becoming, everybody goes to the internet. That is the place. So that, that, that separation between skilled and what we used to call skilled and unskilled, I think a lot has, is changing, particularly with the way we perceive the work that we do. If the internet is the marketplace, the, the accountant goes there to sell his trade. The welder and the plumber that is smart and wise, who is learning how to use it, also goes to Facebook to sell his trade. The moment you are beginning to do that, you discover that things are beginning to, the, the dividing line is beginning. Eventually, what is most important, I mean, in the future that we're facing now, what is most important is not the certificate you hold in the university. I mean, you read there that I read sociology and anthropology, but I have not practiced different. that. Eventually, what will matter? Is the problem you're solving for someone, for your neighbor, for your community? Is the value you're bringing to the table? After some time, this skilled labor and unskilled labor and all of these things, you would, you'd, in fact, you would now find out that a lot of people who quote and unquote have the skilled labor background in that sense, the formal education background, they are going into these vocational um, enterprises and building enterprises, building big businesses out of them. There's okay, a, so yes. um, let's quickly talk about, because you just you talk about solving problems. Um, yes. This brings to mind the, new, the concept of the way we don't co-found together, which is the Giddy Jobs. Tell us, um, Asha, how um, the Giddy Job experience and the journey has been so far. What's Giddy Job all about? Wait, sorry, just to add to that, especially as now they interface or rather interact with a lot of youths, because I know that some youths will tell you, say, I know if you learn skills. It's not possible. Me, I'm not just to work for a company. I know if they learn all those handwork. So tell us how Giddy Jobs don't actually help people discover their talent too. Mm. Okay. So um, it's been a good experience. We started like about three years ago. And uh, within this period, we've worked with almost over 30,000 young people, you know, both in universities and out of university. One thing we've discovered is that our youth are hardworking. Mm -hmm. Only that, you know, the value system has been corrupted. So they want to um, earn money just fast. So they don't want to go through the process of learning, like um, Femi just said. They don't want to go through the process of learning. So what we're trying to tell our youth now, or um, the youth now is, you have to learn what you don't know first. 
Because these people that you see out there that are doing so well, uh, either in the very skilled jobs or the semi-formal uh, jobs, they learned these things. They learned this trade. Even, you know, so we take them from uh, preparing for a job mm -hmm. to doing well mm -hmm. on this job. Mm -hmm. And preparing for a job has to do with the person itself. So it starts with, do you even know yourself? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Do you know the weaknesses you have mm -hmm. and the strength mm -hmm. that you have? So we start from there first because uh, someone comes in, did so well in school, fantastic. You know, he, was, he had a good uh, result in school, but doesn't know what the employer wants. Mm -hmm. because talk about mm -hmm. the employability skills. Yes, employability, employability skills. skills. Yes, You're yes, very right. Yes, so very right. He it, it doesn't know. So he just goes and, you know, he's been used to reading alone, doing stuff alone, but now he has to work with a team. People, he has yeah. to uh, submit to a boss, yeah. not a lecturer. Yeah. And, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. and the dynamics are very different. Mm. So these are the things that will let them know. On the other hand, when we talk about the technical skills, so we talk with, uh, we don't just talk to graduates, graduate students or people that have gone to university. We also talk to uh, people that um, are probably um, polytechnic holders, you know, people that don't really have the BSc degree. But with all these amazing things we're they do, is yeah. there any training coming up anytime soon? Because time is not actually our friend. Oh, we always have trainings, trainings. coming. Yes, okay. we have trainings coming. Time. We have one in August. We have a scholarship program too. Well, where, nice. where people forget all of this information yes. at this point in time? Um, Poise GFA at dot org yes 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 absolutely wow thank you so much for coming on because of time i wish you like because i have so many questions to ask would love to come again to enjoy more of this our ugonke videos when you just watch press this button to subscribe on top of our youtube page you go love her